Against my goat? What does that mean anyway? What a stupid phrase. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. This is Rich Outfield. And this gets my goat. Yes, this is gets this gets your goat on the go. <laughs> <laughs> on the go. We are on a road trip and uh, after the last pressing episode and the gray skies, the world is conspiring to make me unhappy. But this road trip has been a long time in coming. Months ago, six months ago, a year ago, we were talking about doing it, about just getting in the car and driving and recording and talking about stories, maybe brainstorming, a, you know, a writing project and things like that. And we've just never done it. And so over the last few months, uh, when there'd be an article or uh, there was a there was a game, one of those internet games that take out tons of your time, where it was the first line from a, a song popular in the 80s, and then you had to identify the song. And you were stuck in traffic, and I called you, and I said, oh, let's play the game. And I thought it was really, really fun. I don't know why. To hear you go, oh, oh, oh I know what that is, and ah, uh, and that, and stuff. And I try and give hints, things like that. And anyway, I was just like, gosh, yeah. this would have been great on the show. I thought the same thing. As we were playing this, you know, we'd been doing this for a while, and after a while, I was just like, oh, man, I wish we had been recording this, because this, this is great. This would have been a great show. And I guess we can still do it, especially if uh, we're going to be moving to Skype episodes yeah. exclusively. Then it's so easy for me to just have the computer in front of me, and we can do something like that. But this is the first of two articles that I brought with me for us to do episodes about. And I thought that uh, you might either get a kick out of this story or it might spur some kind of conversation. And if not, it's still just an interesting story. Okay. So this is, a, yeah, this is an article that I have not heard before. And, and you know what? Maybe you have. Because it's a long time ago now. Uh-huh. Uh, it's from... Well, it's from 2016, kids. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Can you imagine I don't back then? I don't remember 2016 anymore. It's from The Guardian. The Guardian of the Galaxy? Uh, no, just The Guardian. Oh. It's James Patterson calls off his fictional murder of Stephen King. Is this an article you've read? No. Okay, so I'm just going to read the article, and you can jump in and interrupt if you'd like, or we can just wait till the end and then talk about it. Okay. Best-selling thriller writer James Patterson has canceled publication of his novel The Murder of Stephen King, belatedly deciding that he did not want to cause King and his family, quote-unquote, any discomfort. That's weird, because Stephen King likes to use himself as uh, characters in his own books, so... Yes. <laughs> King has dreamed up his fair share of deranged fans. From Misery's axe-wielding Annie Wilkes, who keeps her favorite writer writing by chopping off his foot, to Morris Bellamy, the villain in his recent thriller Finder's Keepers, who shoots his idol in the head. Patterson's novel, which was only announced last week for publication in November, promised to feature all of Stephen King's greatest villains rolled into one, quote-unquote. Uh, do you know how James Patterson talks? I don't. He's. He, I've seen him a few times on... Uh, he was a recurring character, I think. Did, did he recur? He uh, was at least... Castle. He did at least get one episode in on Castle. Because Castle, for a very short period of time, had this thing where he would get together with other writers and play poker. It was like a season one thing only. I'm pretty sure they just dropped that after a short while because... Everybody's like, I don't. Who are these old guys he's playing? I don't know what any of them. Why? Why do you keep showing them to me? Patterson was one of the writers in the first episode, so I've heard him talk, but I couldn't tell you. I would say he sounds like uh, an American Michael Caine. Maybe just because he kind of looks like Michael Caine. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if I can do that. Good night, you princes of Maine. You kings of New England. I can't do it. <laughs> this is uh, James Patterson. Stephen King is facing a nightmare. A stalker is reenacting the horrors from his novels, 
And he won't stop until he kills the master of suspense himself. Unless King puts him out of his misery first. Wah, wah, see what I did there? Ran its description, with Patterson stating that the novelist did not participate in the making of this novel, nor is he affiliated with it in any way. You're not affiliated with me? I hope he likes it, added Patterson last week, describing himself as a fan of the horror novelist, an admiration that does not seem wholly returned. In 2009, King described Patterson as a terrible writer. <laughs> I would not be too far off of that train. But on Thursday, less than two weeks after the novel was announced, Patterson announced its cancellation. He added that the decision was taken after the publicity that followed the announcement of the murder of Stephen King, when he was alerted to the fact that fans of Stephen King have disrupted the King household in the past. My book is a positive portrayal of a fictional character, and, spoiler alert, the main character is not actually murdered, he said in a statement from his publisher. Nevertheless, I do not want to cause Stephen King or his family any discomfort. Out of respect for them, I have decided not to publish the murder of Stephen King. The novel, part of Patterson's book short series of short reads, and co-authored with Derek Nikita's, will be replaced with Taking the Titanic, a story in which two thieves posing as newlyweds board the doomed ship to rob its well-heeled passengers. Wah, wah. <laughs> I'm disappointed, yes, but what's much more important to me is that we do right by Stephen King, wrote Nikita's on Twitter. According to Associated Press, which saw an early edition of The Murder of Stephen King, the novel features a detective named Jamie Peterson attempting to save King from the man who is trying to murder him. Patterson told AP last week that King's remarks dismissing him as a terrible writer were hyperbole. <laughs> I know I'm not a terrible writer. That's a little over the top, said Patterson, adding that if King wrote a novel called the murder of James Patterson, he would definitely want to read it. I wonder if the novel, if he at the very least sent a copy of the novel to Stephen King so that Stephen King at least got to read it. Or not. I don't know. If he thinks he's a terrible writer, then he probably would just be like, yeah, fuck it, I'm not going to read that. It probably sucks. But... Uh, <laughs> But, but you have to be curious also, though, if, yeah. if somebody wrote this thing from... It's not like it was just some fanfic written... Well, that's probably not true, because the guy who actually wrote it was Nikitas. Yeah, and, you know, he's the real loser in this scenario, because he's done all the work, and then he gains nothing. He doesn't get to profit by it. He doesn't... He got his name out there in this article... But it's not going to help his career or his pocketbook. James Patterson is doing fine without him. He, you know, places his stamp of approval, my guess, on these book shorts. And it could be that he participates more, but it may be that that's where it ends. Yeah, I'm sure that all he does is just, you know, do a rewrite tops on any one of these books. You know, somebody just, he's got editors that are just reading them like, yeah, okay, go with this one. And then he just puts his name on it, does a quick rewrite to add a little something, something. Maybe, if he even does that much. And then, you know, puts it out and takes half the money. Which, I mean, I suppose it probably works because I'm sure that book sells way more than it probably would have otherwise without James Patterson's name on it. Oh, absolutely, and it'll find its way into airports, uh, bookstores, and, and, you know, just it'll find its way onto Amazon.com, which isn't hard, but it'll find its way higher up on, on the list. Right, it'll actually find people, you know, on looking on Amazon.com, whereas and, the 99% of the books that go there do not. And, yeah, if one person reads it and likes it, they might go out and seek out more of this... Uh, Nikita's 
books, whereas otherwise it would just take a miracle for his stuff to get discovered. It would take, like you were saying recently, uh, in uh, it would take some film studio saying, wow, or viral marketing campaign and tons of people tell other tons of people and yeah, just, uh, otherwise it's just going to languish it's it's like yet another guy and he may be super talented but how do you let people know that yeah uh, so it's 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 a bummer um, I feel kind of bad and, and it's an inch it's a when it comes down to it though and I was starting to say it's not like it's fanfic but it kind of is, I guess, really. Yeah. Because it's based on all Stephen King's stuff. And, you know, this guy is doing stuff to people the way that Stephen King's bad guys did. You know, when it comes down to it, it's, it's a Fifty Shades of Grey, but without even changing the names. I don't know. I, I don't know how somebody convinced... James Patterson, it was a good idea. It must have been a really good book, I would guess, for him to look at that and just, you know, see beyond the, yeah, but this is Stephen King, we're, we're talking about killing someone that I don't even know, this is a real person, and we're putting his name on the cover of the book, and, you know, I, I wonder how much that would add to the sales as well. <laughs> well, yeah, I... I... If I saw Take the Titanic and the murder of Stephen King next to each other in, at that self-same airport bookstore, I'd certainly grab the, the murder of Stephen King. Uh, and I would think that fans of King that don't read Patterson would probably pick this book up. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other thing is controversy. Except for in this one case... Controversy has never hurt any media release. It gets people talking about it. It gets awareness way up. It gets people, like, oh, I heard about that. Oh, geez. Oh, you don't know? Let me tell you. No, I haven't seen it, but I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> and people that would never even look twice are suddenly scrutinizing and wondering and spreading the word. That, you know, go, It goes viral in a different way. Um, so I, my guess is, had this book been released, it would have started all sorts of discussion of, can you do this? Don't does don't they owe Stephen King some kind of royalties? But does Stephen King not own the character of Pennywise or the character of Randall Flagg who appear in this book? Do does his publisher own that stuff? It's like, is it moral to write this sort of thing? It, you know, that kind of stuff, and and all that would just help the book if it existed yeah I would think so the only thing I can think of is that that may have torpedoed it is some lawyer sent along a little uh, a little thing saying don't do it or else you know you think you're going to get the profits from it no we are going to take the profits uh, from it from you and a little bit more for punitive damages too so, just don't. That's that's my guess as to why they decided to cancel it. Is that uh, somebody made it seem not worth the while, despite the fact that it would, you know, make a lot of money because of all that controversy and the you know all those different things that we just talked about, which would, in general, just make things better for it. Are, would be outweighed by the fact that instead they would lose money on the on the thing in the end. That's my guess, and I, I do worry about that kind of stuff just in general. I don't know, like when you write stuff. I know you have an entire, I would say, series of short stories that are set in a town. It's basically the town you, you grew up in. Uh, more or less, but the town I went to high school. Right. Okay. The area you grew up in, we'll say, the town you grew up in is, is so small it doesn't even <laughs> doesn't even warrant mention in your own stories. 
but yeah, the town you went to high school in. Uh, but it doesn't have its real name. It has a completely made up name. And so no one can say, hey, I'm that guy that you're talking about in that story because instead you've changed the names to protect the innocent and the guilty. And lots of times you... There's lots of media out there where they set it in a real place. Like, you know, CSI New York, CSI Las Vegas, etc. Where they're really blatant with it. Or other ones where, you know, like, I don't know, I think Psych. Was it really set in Santa Barbara or did they make up a name for it and just film it in Santa Barbara? I think it was set in Santa Barbara. Anyways, you set it in a real place. Usually when you set it in a real place, you don't include real people from that real place, though. You have a fictional mayor of Las Vegas or a fictional police chief of Santa Barbara or whatever. Very seldom do you get a real person as a character in, in fiction. Uh, sometimes people are, like, happy to, you know, be a, do a cameo of their selves or something like that. Like, Paris Hilton shows up as a character in VOC, playing herself, but Paris Hilton couldn't play someone else anyways, which sucks. So, you know, that's the only chance he has of getting on screen. I wonder about that. Do you worry about that? Sometimes, you know, I'll set things in real places as much as possible. And one thing that I found, like, the book that I'm writing right now is set in uh, an area of Denver, Colorado. And I keep going to, you know, Google Maps and stuff like that just to make sure that all the places they go are real. And so, like, for example, these kids' parents just had a big fight at Chili's. Should I use Chili's? Or will I get in trouble later for having used Chili's as the location where his parents have a big fight and they're upset that, uh, I don't know, that we portray, I portray chilies in a bad light by having something like this take place in their restaurant. Because their restaurant is only where people are happy. Well, it's hard to say. Because Chili's is this giant franchise and chain, it seems like that actually gives you more freedom than if it were some mom and pop place that actually exists in Denver and you mentioned that. The best example I can think of is that there's a restaurant in Denver called Casa Bonita. And on South Park, the characters for Cartman's birthday, they all wanted to go to Casa Bonita. And so they got in the car and they went there. And, and it was... <laughs> it served as a sort of a backhanded advertisement for this actual place uh -huh. in Denver. And... There were, have been references in subsequent episodes to Casa Bonita, too. And the owner of Casa Bonita is just like, holy cow, you have no idea how great this has been. Uh huh. Because people didn't even know this existed. And now people <laughs> go out of their way, say, oh, there really is a Casa Bonita? Does it really have a waterfall indoors? Holy cow, where anytime, are you going? Anytime someone takes a trip to Denver, they're like, I gotta go to Casa Bonita. That's one of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, I'm gonna see a Broncos game and go to Casa Bonita. Those are the three things I want to do while I'm here. Oh, and, it, you know, it's not that big a deal, but for him, it is. Yeah, for him, I'm sure it um, totally increases his business. But South Park tends to be unkind to the right. things that it lampoons, to the things that it mocks. This is one of the few exceptions. But, yeah, I mean, if it had been shit and if the wait staff had been rude and if the food had been terrible and stuff, then it's very different. Uh -huh. for this owner, I would think. But yeah, for Chili's, every single town has a Chili's. And my guess is, unless you describe in detail which Chili's it is and use you know, the name of the actual manager or whatever, none of that is going to ever bother them. And also just probably because Chili's is too big, the owner of Chili's is not going to look and say, oh, hey, the character's in God, I'm old. I, I was thinking Malcolm in the middle. Uh, the characters in 
this is us. I'll go out to eat at Chili's. Wow, that that's going to draw more attention to us on this show. Or you know, they have a bad time at Chili's. Wow, that's going to draw negative attention to us. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, something like that. At least somebody's going to actually hear about. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to hear about my book that has a scene set in Chili's. So most likely, all that'll ever happen is that no one knows other than the, you know, the 20 people that ever bought it, uh, that there even was something in Chili's. So <laughs> probably yeah, doesn't that's... matter, but you know, you never know. Uh, maybe something I, I do will catch lightning in the bottle and I will be the next E.L. James. Is that what her name was? Be the next so, Derek Nikitas. Yeah. Okay. Derek. Well, I was thinking of the person who wrote, uh, the fanfic that became Fifty Shades of Grey and made this woman a very rich person. You know, maybe I'll be that next person that gets that. And then all of a sudden, what I put in there matters uh, and could possibly be an issue. I don't know. I always thought that it's cool uh, to try and make it as anchored in reality as possible. So I will use names of restaurants if I can and I will use you know places and, and street names and things like that if I can but maybe that's not a good idea I don't know it's like Hope's house yeah well it's it's hard to say and you just gotta do whatever you wanna do I, it's difficult enough to finish a novel to write anything Right. Um, to place more obstacles in your path by self-guessing, by self, what's the word? Censoring? By second-guessing second yourself guessing. Okay. and asking, oh, well, maybe I should change this, or oh, so and so. Because you and I have both written stories about the people around us. You know, I was inspired by her, or I was inspired by you and on that. And they read it, uh, and we've had people that are flattered by that, and we've had people that are just like, what? This is how you see me? What? You know, you're just like, oh, well, again, it's a fictional character. It's kind of like we were talking about in the last episode. Uh, I'm reminded, I see, I read The Fault in Our Stars. Did you read that? I haven't read it. I've seen the movie. John Green wrote this book, uh, you know, and, and in it there is a, a teenage girl who is obsessed with a book. And it's a fictional book and a fictional writer. And as I was reading that, I was just like, why? Why does it have to be fictional? I don't understand. Why can't it be X that she just loves? Why, why did it have to be made up? And, and of course, that's revealed later in the book when they meet the author and he turns out to be a drunk and a complete asshole. And you're just like, oh, okay. Or I was like, wow, that's why it couldn't be <laughs> a James Patterson guy. or a... Uh... Maeve Binchy. Whoa, hey. Okay, sorry. Explicit warning, guys. <laughs> uh, one of those. I did end up seeing the movie really recently. Enough time had passed since reading the book that... I figured it was safe to see the movie. And of course, none of that is changed with the... The book was called An Imperial Affliction. And the phony writer was played by uh, Willem Dafoe and all that. So, you know, you didn't have to change anything when it suddenly was this gargantuan movie. But they did change one thing that I noticed from the book. In the book, there's the Make-A-Wish Foundation they've got these terminally ill cancer kids and they have their make their wish to get to do whatever they want and they were the ones that sent her to Amsterdam or wherever it was that the guy was at right that's correct and in but, the in the book the love interest the main male character mocks her choice of going to Disney World as for her wish that she wasted it and all this and you know it's how childish is that Anyway, when it came time to make the movie, make the Make a Wish Foundation didn't want those statements in regards to their fine. I can't even call it a company, their fine foundation, organization, and so they had to make up a phony. Make we a we we help kids with their bucket list <laughs> sort of foundation. And I just thought, oh, okay, well, you know, that's one of those things that you have to consider when it becomes a movie that millions of people are going to yeah. see versus when it becomes a book 
that only women between the ages of 13 and 50 are going to read. So that's a callback to when Big on the show said, the reason all these writers are women is because men don't read. Yep, that just shows exactly what you are because you read that book. Oh, it was fudging great. Yeah. By the way, I will go 10 rounds with anybody no, about I'm, the friggin' Fault in Our Stars. I'm Holy just saying cow. you read, I therefore you are not a man. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, I haven't read that book. You know, it's funny because my daughter read it. Because she's a woman between the age of 13 and 50. She didn't like it. I don't know. Uh, I think she was just not into the depressing thing. Because it definitely has that uh, in spades. Almost like it's a big Anklevich story or something. Yeah, it's weird, the, the, the switching of things like that. You never know. You know, I have other stories. Like, I have a story called uh, Little Caesar's Ghost that uh, I mean to mess with a little bit here soon and, and put out there for people to read. But, yeah, it's it's about, you know, I when I was younger, I worked at Little Caesar's. Little and, Caesar's is a pizza franchise. Yeah, if... It's divine. And if, again, ten rounds with anybody who disagrees, because people disagree all the time. <laughs> if you uh, don't know... And, I, and to them I say, Caesar's. you have never been poor. You have never had the joys of a welfare Christmas. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyways, I worked there for uh, like a year and a half or something like that when I was younger. And so it's kind of based on me and my friend, and uh, things change, obviously. In real life, my friend doesn't die in a car accident, but in the he story... Will. In the story, he does, and his ghost appears uh, at the Little Caesars. And his ghost is tied to the Little Caesars. It, like, can't leave the Little Caesars. And so the entire story basically takes place at Little Caesars, and... <sighs> As a short story, it'll always be Little Caesars and Little Caesars Ghost. If anything happens, I don't know. Maybe there will come a day when somebody says, "Oh no, dude, we gotta, we gotta. This can't be Little Caesars anymore. It needs to be, you know, Fatty Ian's Pizza instead." And we'll just make up a pizza place that it happens at instead. Which, no big deal. It is a big deal because the story's title. Yeah. Is affected you when would that have happens. to change the title. And that's that, true. I mean, I haven't read your story, but the title is brilliant, <laughs> and that's that's gone. Yeah, completely. And that if would, it becomes anything else, that would be sad. But you know, if there's a gigantic paycheck that comes with it, and I'd be happy to change the title to whatever the hell they want. I could change it to Burns. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's the kind of shit that happens. Uh, and yeah, going back to this thing, this this article is dated now. You know, it talks about November of 2016 as being in the future. I should have done some research to see if there was any continue, any follow-up to this. Because it seems to me you lived your life candle. like a candle in the wind. And yeah, I never knew where to turn to. When, when, when the, the rains, rains came, in. yeah, uh, I would have liked to know you actually. <laughs> Anyhow, it seems to me that there are people out there besides me that would have liked to have read this story, this book, and if enough of them made enough of a stink and say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" whoa. I mean, and if yeah, this Nikita's guy made enough of a stink, there's got to be another way. Of getting it out there. Yeah. Now, maybe the lawyers say, well, yeah. But now it's going to be the murder of Steve Queen. <laughs> you know, something like that. And you have to change all of these things, which <laughs> makes it a different story. But it it's still doable. It could still be enjoyable. You know, in the same way as it's no longer Bella and Edward in Fifty Shades of Grey. And it becomes these new characters. Yeah. It's the murder of Steve McQueen. They're like, there, we fixed it. Yeah, nobody's going to get upset at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, and th there could be, a, if, if enough Stephen King fans just got, 
in Stephen King's here and said, hey, what happened? Did you guys put a stop to this? We would love to read it. And then maybe Stephen King would be like, oh, well, oh, maybe I, maybe I should stop being a douche about this and actually let it come out. Maybe I could work out a deal where I get 10% of the profits or something. I don't know. And you know, that's, that seems fair. That's a doable solution. Because, yeah, it's a business. And people would be profiting off of his name. There's no denying that. Even if it's, you know, a loving tribute and all that stuff. There's a difference between Maeve Binchy writing Murder of an Author and James Patterson semi-writing Murder of Stephen King. Yeah. Anyhow, I would enjoy reading it, and I, I feel bad for the writer. I, I hope... That he, that, you know, this is still some publicity. We've said his name several times, and and, and other people have to have as a, well. We've got a huge, yeah, we have a gargantuan. So. We're practically James Patterson ourselves. <laughs> so I'm sure this guy's uh, Amazon page is just going bing, bing, bing with the sales. Which brings us to our sponsor this week, James Patterson's newest Alex Cross novel, Hot Cross Bun. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting for that one. I can't wait to read it. I'm so excited that we've got this great new sponsor. Middle-aged black detective Alex Cross has been putting on a few pounds. So it's time to hit the gym. But little does Alex know that murder can strike even when you're on a treadmill. Hot Cross Buns from Siegel & Schuster. It's available in bookstores now. And... The, the normal bullshit that people do when there's actually a sponsor. Yeah, that stuff. Is there anything else you have to say about this article? What, was was this worth your time? Was it fun? It to... was fun. I, th I thought it was. It brought up interesting issues. I think. But I, I, yeah, if I wrote a story about the uh, murder of big anchor. Well, I, I was kind of trying to go on there. Okay, let, let's say that I wrote a story about hand-packed husband and his wife goes into some other dimension and becomes like this Amazon warrior and when she comes back you know she's in charge and she kicks his ass and he's flabby and diabetic and lazy and has no ambition so have I missed anything <laughs> and then she just starts kicking his ass and, and humiliating him and stuff like that and I actually named the characters after members of your family uh, by the way all of this is true guys I haven't published it, but all of this is true. What would your reaction be? What I mean is, at what point does it stop being cute and it becomes not cool? Uh, you know, I think the only thing that I would be upset about is just I would upset probably more strong than it would be. But the things that the thing that I would say is yeah, just change the names. That's all. That's as far as it needs to go. I wouldn't care if my name stayed in there, but I don't know how other people in my family would feel about their names being in there. Now, when it comes down to it, it probably doesn't matter at all, because... They won't read your they're stuff, not gonna, they're not going to yeah, read my stuff. They're not going to read it. Probably never happen. You know, I've been doing this podcast for nine years, and almost no one that I actually know... No, let's say it again. Almost no one that I actually knew before I started the podcast listens to it or has ever listened to an episode of it. So it'll probably never happen. We have 500 some odd episodes uh, of our various podcasts out there. Maybe, maybe someday my kids will grow up and they'll be like, huh, dad just died. Uh, maybe I should listen to this. And, and they'll be like, God, what? My dad was a douche. I had no idea. I should have hated him all along. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't worry that anyone's going to actually uh, ever read it, to be offended by it, but you never know. Okay, but when, at what point does, does it stop being moral? Bikes. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> this little car, almost as small as mine, uh, had these gigantic, like, some kind of alien antennae or some weird, like, 
like weather gathering equipment or something sticking up off the top of it. And then it finally got close enough for me to realize that they were two bikes standing straight up off of the uh, bike rack on its roof. Um, they looked very strange from far away. I think they had like some kind of thing around the handlebars that made them look more technological than it, it turned out to be. Anyways, but I'll people... have to go in and turn that alarm off for you so you can stop shaking your head every time it hits. So what was your question before the bike came? Sorry. I... Okay, well, people on Facebook, there are um, you and I have tons of writer friends, people who are writers, who are real writers. And the, the real writers aren't our friends. They might deign to speak with us sometimes, but when that's the case, yeah, they, they're like, ah, shake the clingy things off of me so that I can actually ascend to high heights. Just kidding. Sorry. Go uh, on. Anyhow, uh, you'll see on the t- all the time, you know, like little writerly posts, you know, comments. One of them that I see all the time is, I am a writer. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you in a book and it's it's amusing but when do you have to cross when do you draw a line sorry i almost said the name of the next alex cross thriller (laughs) cross the line by james patterson coming october 2017 to bookstores everywhere thank you when does it become immoral when is it when do you say okay hey, hey, hey hey dude that was something that I told you. Now you've used it in a story or in a, uh, a, a novel. My, you use my own words against me. Have you ever seen... There was a Woody Allen movie that came out like right around 98. And I can't... Deconstructing, Deconstructing Harry. Harry. Where that was basically uh, at least one of the, one of the things that occurred in that movie and he would basically write these obvious send-ups of people that he knew and and right off the start they have like a a scene where Julia Louise Dreyfus is having sex with somebody like in the closet or, or somewhere and like the grandma's just outside the door or something asking questions and they're trying to uh play off that they're not right there having sex and et cetera, et cetera. So that's a scene from his story. And then they go to the real life and the real person who Julia Louise Dreyfus was representing and she's all pissed at him. Like, how could you write a story about that? No, everybody knows that we fucked in a closet while grandma was right outside the door or whatever. She was super upset. because I guess because he made it obvious or... She was super upset, upset because it had actually happened. Because it had actually happened, and everybody read his story, and everybody knew exactly who he was sending up. It was not, uh, you know, a, a mystery. You know, and this kind of thing, I guess, was, you know, he had that happen more than once in his, uh, his stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, when you're doing stuff like that, You've got to, uh, yeah, figure out where the line is, where you you cross and won't cross uh, the hot cross buttons. Available now on <laughs> your your Nook, on your Kindle, an audio version read by, ironically enough, Maeve Binchy. Yeah. And right now at Audible, you can get ten percent off a subscription. If you go to audible.com forward slash Dunstief. I think nobody says forward slash. You just gave it away that you're old. So, yeah, my question was, when does it become immoral? When, where do you draw the line? Or is everything okay? I would say that there isn't an easy line that you can just say, here's, you know, as far as you go. Um, I think it just, it's, it's more of a case by case kind of a thing. If you're using somebody, consider who that person is and whether they will stand for that or not, you know, and I guess how much you like that person and whether you care if they, uh, are now no longer your friend because 
uh, you did this. That is the possibility. What you you might uh, have happened. You know, you may have them freaking out. You may have them calling lawyers, etc. So you know, you you got to I guess uh, consider how how they will react to it. Now, it is calling lawyers when you say when when is it immoral? I suppose that's different. Well, I'm asking as you uh, you are a writer now, because as you always say, a writer is someone who writes every day. Yes. And so I guess I'm asking your opinion, because I have my own opinion, and big shock, there's no line. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but like, in 1996, there was this band. You've never heard of them now. They were called Matchbox 20, and their very first hit was this song called Push. Can you remember how it went? I wanna push you around, and, and I will, and I will. I wanna push you down, and I will. Anyhow, this song was a big hit. And Rob Thomas, the author of this song, had had a girlfriend who was abusive and super pushy, for lack of a better word. Anyway, when this and song... Chevy. She was also Chevy. She was Chevy. She was Benchy a little bit. Um, <laughs> and when this song became a big hit, she lawyered up and said, I was the inspiration for this song. I should get the royalties. Oh, this God. should come to me because I am this song. I am the abusive person he's singing about. I am so vain, I probably think this song is about me, she said. And as you can probably guess, the case was dismissed. It was thrown out of court. And the fact that I still remember it is astounding. But it was so shocking, so spurious to me. It was just like, what? what? You can do, you can claim to have rights to this because, the, you know. Anyhow, I just thought of that, and I guess that that gives you my opinion. But I like yours. Yeah, I just, I, I think it's more of a case-by-case -case kind of a thing. Whether there is an immoral line to cross... I don't know. There, there's the line of, you know, protect covering your ass that you, you might want to uh, consider as you do things like that. But actual morality of it, yeah, you probably don't want to air somebody's really dirty laundry for the world without at least having their permission or without changing it enough that it's not going to be obvious. And, and, and again, like I said, you know, depends on how much you care. If you hate that person, well then fuck it. You know, who cares? They're, they're going to be angry at you, and you don't care because you don't like them. And so let them be angry at you. You're probably doing it on purpose to make them be angry at you. Yeah, I think there's a lot of caveats, I guess, that goes with that. And, uh, yeah, it, not last year, but the Christmas before, I had a co-worker at my job, and she and I became partners in uh, a very short-lived promotion that I had. And instead of giving her a present for Christmas, I decided I would write a zombie story set it at our workplace. And, and give it to her as her present. Where she, and she was the hero and got to, you know, kill zombies and say the F word. And I gave it to her and she loved it. Loved it. <laughs> but she loved it so much that she shared it with other co-workers. And yeah, once that happened, I thought, oh, I guess I shouldn't have used the actual names of co-workers in this story, should I have? So yes, when you're saying covering your ass, that's when yeah, you gotta do there is, things. There is possible blowback that could come from things like that. So, you know, like the case of this article where the guy's like, yeah, I'm gonna use Stephen King, and, and then the blowback was, oh, well, that means your book's not going to be published because uh, you used Stephen King instead of just making up an author that is almost exactly like Stephen King, 
as Stephen King himself would have done, and has done, again and again. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's the real thing that you have to think about as you do that kind of stuff. Just, that's one of those things about being friends of an author, I would suppose, is that someday, if you, if you read their stuff, you'll probably find yourself in there someday. Uh, I remember <laughs> there was uh, my story that I wrote, uh, Battle of the Ideas, in which there were two characters that were loosely based on you and I, and, um, you know, I tried to make them relatively different. Uh, the character that was based on you was like a Latin lover. He had a, a freaking, a different, unbelievably hot chick every week that he would uh, show up with when they would get together and hang out. And I remember... The big shock, I was not displeased by that. The funny thing was, though, what, you read the story and gave me comments, and one of your comments was, gosh, I, I wish you would stop having him do this because I keep thinking that this guy is me, but then when this happens... Realize you know, it's not. I realize it, it's not me. So, you know, you, you see yourself in it, but also not. You know, and that's going to be the case probably with all, you know, if you're... You know, the, I was listening to this comedian. I'll do this sometimes at work because most of the stuff that I do doesn't require me listening to things. I'm just cutting together video. And, uh, you know, I'll look at stuff so I can listen to things, um, podcasts, or, you know, much more than just the music. You know, most people, then, you know, they can listen to music to fill the silence. But I can even go much beyond that because my mind uh, can be thinking about other things as I work. So I'll put on, you know, on YouTube, comedian. So there was a comedian. And he, you know how comedians are. That it, it, This guy was basically... Just like Louis C.K., so he's talking about, you know, all this dirty sexual stuff, uh, details of him and his wife and the things that they've done. And he talks about a time that he was going down on his wife and she farted. And, uh, it, it, and this is what his wife said. She's like, oh, I can't believe that I did that. And he's like, hey, man, it happens to everybody. She's like, yeah. But now you're going to talk about it on stage. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's, I guess, you know, what you, the, the, what you signed up for. Like you were saying with the post where, you know, if you're, uh, I'm a writer, if you're my friend, then what you say can and will be used against you in, uh, not a court of law, but, you know, whatever. So... Yeah, I guess that's what you got when you're a friend, especially a family member of uh, someone who's a writer, you know. The person that spends the most time with a writer, you know, all those things that are happening in their life are eventually, in some form or another, going to get twisted into a story. Because um, it's quicker and easier to do. <laughs> well, it also adds life to whatever project you're writing it's just little interesting things that happen are what keeps us going every single day I mean you have a job that's monotonous but every day something different happens a little twist or oh holy cow this happened at work today and you know you've got the paycheck but then you've also got this that keeps you going for a couple more weeks feeds into your art uh, I think that we've probably talked way too long <laughs> but you mentioned Fat Ian's Pizza an hour ago, and that came out, um, my very first screenplay that I wrote, in the class that you and I met each other in, and we had a mutual friend named Ian, and at one point, my characters were going to a pizza place, and I thought it would be neat to acknowledge Ian, and so they were going to Fat Ian's Pizza. And, uh, gosh, he took it so badly. He, he took it really personally in a negative way 
that they had gone to eat at Fat Ian's Pizza. And it surprised me because I thought the opposite would be true. I'd be like, hey, was that named after me? Wow, thanks, man. But now, it's all these years later, anytime anybody goes out for pizza or goes to a pizza place in anything I write, Fat Ian's Pizza, always. Because yeah. of the stink that he made. He was he was sad to be referred to as fat. I, I think he just didn't understand. Couldn't couldn't wrap his mind around the you know concept of an Italian restaurant being named Fat Luigi's or Fat Giuseppe or Fat whatever you know because that's it's a thing it's a thing that happens and uh, I don't know it just seems silly to complain about it but that see I got it so. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't in his head to know that he was even upset. I remember you telling me that he was upset about it, and I thought, wow, weird. Why would he be upset? The weird thing was, he was so far from fat, too. I was sure he still is. I was double the size of the guy, even back then, and, you know, I could have eaten him for lunch. And, uh, and a couple of times I did. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, I don't know. If, if it had been Fat Big Anklevich's pizza, I wouldn't have batted an eye. But uh, you never know. You never know who's going to take it, how they're going to take it. I've been trying to do that with uh, people who subscribe to the show. You know, I've, I've basically made that a thing that I'm going to do is, you know, I'll, I'll add their names. You, know, you, you uh, become a subscriber to the show... And I'm going to try and put your name in as a character in a story. And I don't guarantee that it's going to be a good character or a bad character. It's just going to happen probably here or there or somewhere. Uh, one time somebody gave us a good donation and, and we offered to, uh, you know, put their name into a story. And they said, okay, but make sure I'm a villain. <laughs> so you never know what's going to make somebody happy. Uh, I just try to do that so just as kind of a thing I don't know maybe it'll come back and bite me and somebody will be like why the hell did you use my name for this whatever that was terrible that's not what I wanted I hope that doesn't happen but who knows but if you do subscribe to the show you know and hey, keep an eye out watch for it someday your name may pop up in a, in a story very cool all right, well, as always, there are comments at the bottom of the screen. There is a forum page you can go to, dunesteef.freeforums.org, I believe is the address for that. That's right. And I and you, I, if you are a writer and you've had experiences with this, I'd love to hear positive and negative experiences. If you're a writer of erotica and you've inserted the names of people around you, I'd be fascinated to find out what the reaction to that you is. You inserted the names and events of people around you. <laughs> like Harry, who was deconstructed. Uh, yeah, it would be cool. Uh, definitely uh, give us some comments, folks. We'd love them. Anyways, I guess we're done. I'm going to pull into this rest area since it's right here and we're finishing up. Uh, so... We'll, uh, we'll be back again shortly, and uh, we'll have more to say. We've got more articles to talk about. So uh, we'll see you later, folks. I've been Big Anklevich. And I've been Fat Rich Outfield. And I've been Fatter Big Anklevich. <laughs> Good night. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 3.0. Share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. You know, like, I don't know, I think Psych. <sighs> Dang, was Psych 7 really in San? Uh, San, 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 what's the name of that town in California that I can't think of now? Just north of L.A. Paradise on Earth. For some reason, the only one that... Santa Barbara, thank you. Thank you for helping me with that. <laughs>
driveway? I don't know. I ran over a deer on this road, so I don't know. Oh, yeah? You think of 